Hello and welcome to Literary Merit, the show where we tell you what media has value. Spoiler alert, it's all of it. Also, spoiler alert, we'll be discussing spoilers as usual, so here's your warning. I'm Ashley. And I'm Alex. And today we have our third ever guest, uh, the magnificent Rachel and or Brent, uh, on. known on Twitter as Brent Raptor. How are you? Um, I'm alright. Sorry, your audio just, like, freaked out for a second. <laughs> oh, <laughs> sorry. I'm very nervous. Um, I thought... <laughs> You were being, like, assimilated into, like, the Borg or something. Yeah, um, that'll happen sometimes. <laughs> if it happens too much, let me know, but it'll record on my end just fine. Okay. So, as long as you can, yeah. like, figure out what I'm saying, then we're Was okay. Was that? Yeah, just ask, just ask right. to repeat Was that whatever. a good Borg joke? I've never seen Star Trek literally ever in my life. It, it rang true to me, but I watch very little Star Trek myself. Okay, cool. So. Well, we're not talking about <laughs> Star Trek. Can I introduce the topic? Sure, we usually do a little chatting first. Oh, but... no, let's let's chat. Yeah, yeah. how, how are you doing? <laughs> um, all right, I had some trouble. I'm recording in my dorm, which is not ideal. Again, like, uh, uh -huh. we, uh, the sound booth was locked, and there was nobody on campus to unlock it for me, which has me feeling pretty ticked, but that's all right. I mean, I'm coming into this uh, with, like, some, a little bit of anger, but that's all right. Uh, they failed you. Yeah, they did. They failed me, and uh, I will never forgive them. It's all right. It's my last. It's my last year here. I can afford to make grudges. Um, <laughs> so uh, we usually uh, start the show by just sort of talking about a little what we've been up to lately. If we've done anything fun or interesting, you uh, you have any fun times lately, or just. Um, being a college person. Yeah, well, I'd love to hear about, like, what you two have been up to this week, but I can tell you I've been spending this week, uh, depressed. No, I've been spending this cool. week, no, it's, that's, it's, that was a funny depressed, not a depressed <laughs> Trust me, I'm not, I am not at any point being earnest. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, no earnestness here. <laughs> excellent. Um, I have been storyboarding, uh, Yes, yes, and you're working on your, your friend's project? Yes, I am. It's called Maskers um, by Toby Goodman. Uh, it's hopefully going to be an animated short that will eventually be part of a series with any luck. Um, and I'm very excited about it. I'll plug it probably again at the end. And I'm also yeah. doing a webcomic. Uh, it is not launched yet. It will probably be launched in <laughs> early 2018 um, called Miriam Beach. That's the tentative title. Um, mm -hmm. and I'm very excited to share, like, both of those things with you. So, what have you two been up to? Yeah, Alex, how about you? You're usually the one to go first. Um, I was sick yesterday, so that was super fun. Oh, no. Um, it was like, I don't know, I hadn't been sick all year, so it was bound to happen at some point. You know, you always get at least, you know, sick once. Yeah. Um, but seems to have passed, which is good. That's good. <laughs> Just in time to record today. Yeah, but I but I did spend all of yesterday binge watching one of my favorite uh, sitcoms, which I can talk about a little bit later. Cool. Um, cool we'll tie that in. <laughs> the yeah. whole third season of that. <laughs> cool. So just been chilling at home, trying to recuperate your terrible body. <laughs> Yeah, thank thank goodness I have yesterday, today, and tomorrow off. So. Oh God, yes, man, that's one upside well, to working retail, right? <laughs> right, is they 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 never schedule you right, but then hey, you get sick and you're like, oh, thank goodness I don't have to be sick at work. Yeah. <laughs> and um, my book comes out tomorrow. So that's what? Nice. Yes, 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 yes. Tomorrow. So when do you go to Seattle? So the reading I think is at two or three. So I'll probably be leaving at like nine or ten in the morning. Oh, that's not so bad. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, and it, it's a Sunday, so the traffic won't be too abysmal oh, yeah. on I five. No, I mean, exactly. I five's always mm -hmm. bad, but at least <laughs> at least it's right. not gonna be terrible. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, well, yeah, because um, Brent, you don't know because you wouldn't no, know I because don't. you two have just met. Yeah, uh, yeah. Al Alex uh, has written a chat book of poetry that's oh, uh, being published, and it's yeah, it's coming out, and it's super that's, exciting. It's really excited. Uh, Milk and Honey too, the sequel to Milk and Honey. <laughs> this time, not written by the original author. Her her, her second book actually just oh, came yeah, out. Oh yeah, that's why everyone's talking about her. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, so yeah, I'm really excited because I'm going to try to go to the um, the event that's going to be more local here, mm-hmm. but because um, we're both sort of in the Portland, Oregon area. Um, but yeah, I'm super excited for you, Alex. That's really, really yeah, awesome. Like, I want to hear all about it. <laughs> Definitely, yeah, me and too. It was so funny. <laughs> I went to get my hair cut. I think it was Thursday or, or Wednesday, but I was talking to my the lady cutting my hair, and I was like, yeah, um, you know, it's coming out. She's super excited. And then I, she was ringing me up with her square. Oh, yeah. Um, and I was like, oh, so how does that work? And she explained it to me, and then she just gave me one for free. Oh, what a darling. Wow. I mean, I think they give, because I signed up for the app, and they, they mail you one, but it takes usually a week to get you, to you. So, like, they're free anyway, I think. <gasps> The basic ones. Oh wow! So you Good got like? Um, do you mean she gave you a little swipey thing? <gasps> yeah, that's so cool. So now I'll be able to take credit cards. So now, now people that God. don't have cash can don't have I'm to worry. I'm officially jealous. That is so good. Well, to know. Uh, like I said, just sign up for the app, and when you sign up for the app, they'll be like, "Oh hey, we have your address. Oh. Do you want to? Uh, do you want us to send you one awesome. for free? That... And it sure it takes a that week. That might but... come in handy, actually. Yeah, if you're. Yeah. Um. So. Um, the one, like, not necessarily downside, but the way they make money is they take 2.5% <laughs> of the money that you make. Yeah, I assume they get a fig. Which is, like, it's a, yeah, it's two and a half pennies. Reasonable fee, I'd this say. This is my favorite show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's the business side, yes, guys. Yes, <laughs> the business corner. What have you been up to, Ashley? Um, you know, very little, <laughs> but yesterday I did a thing I've never done before. Ooh. I spilled coffee on the top of my own head. Oh, what? <laughs> huh? Hold on, walk, walk me through how that happened. I'm very interested to know. It's a, it's a doozy. I've met, okay, so, I was, yesterday I was driving home from work, and I was okay. like, I'm really beat. I'm gonna stop at Dutch Brothers and get a coffee. So I went to the drive-thru, I'm driving home, and I'm like, you know what, I got my sunglasses on. I don't need this visor. And so with the hand that's holding the coffee, I went to lift the visor. The visor pops out of its little clippy, and I just go slosh, and it just, like, dribbles down my head. Oh, that's awful. (laughs) It it wasn't too hot. It was mostly in my hair. Oh, my God. (laughs) I was just like, wow, okay. And you want to know the best part? I haven't yet showered. Oh my god. <laughs> well, you're about to discover that, like, this is some new kind of treatment, I think. Yeah, my hair will grow in all luscious and, and yeah. lustrous. It's yeah, gonna be incredible. It, take it to goop. Yes, it's the it's the pumpkin spice hair treatment. Holy shit. <laughs> that would catch on, like, wildfire. Wouldn't it? Oh my god, I hope it's true. Wait, because was I it? Would go cra- was it, it was a PSL? Spice. Okay, it was a PSL. Yeah. I mean, it was... It was Dutch Brothers, not Starbucks, because Starbucks is nasty crap, but yes. <laughs> Gosh. So... Well, there goes our Starbucks sponsorship. <laughs> oh. uh, Black Rock all the way. Never anything else. So, yeah. But that's, I don't really have any good news. I mean, tomorrow I'm going to go see Cirque du Soleil, and that's oh, really exciting. Cool. I'm very stoked America's for that. For, no, wait. France is foremost pervert. Perverts. Can- Canada's, actually. Oh, Canada. Wow. Canada. Yeah, they're, Canada's they're main Canada. export is perverts. Yes, but like beautiful, <laughs> graceful perverts. <laughs> uh, that's I, fair. I, I love I love Cirque. I'm really really excited to go. So that's gonna be fun. Yeah, it was nice. actually funny. Um, like my my fiance really wanted to go see this show. We try to go every chance that we get, and so he was like, "I just bought us tickets. We have to go." <gasps> that's and then, so like, a cu- sweet. Yeah, and then a couple of days later. Uh, my dad was like, I was at Costco and they had Cirque tickets there, so I bought them for everyone. Oh. And I'm like, well, okay. So, like, my whole family has already seen it. <laughs> so they were like, oh, you gotta go. I'm like, yeah, I know. I'm going. Just be quiet, please. So, yeah. <laughs> anyway, that's my life right now. Coffee that's great. and Cirque du Soleil. So, now, why don't you introduce our topic, please? Okay. Uh, we're talking about Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Nine nine, nine nine. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I guess this uh, this topic was your uh, your idea. So why don't you sort of it was? talk? Oh, about- it was. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> it was. I don't remember anything. So why don't you sort of um, talk about why you thought it would be an interesting subject? 
Okay, well, I have a troubled relationship with this show in that <laughs> I love it, but I hate everything it stands for. Um, allow me to I explain. Know what you mean. Yeah. I am, I am an avowed leftist, although my leftist bona fides might be called into question because I enjoy this show. But I am <laughs> against the prison industrial con- uh, complex. I am against police brutality and very much the actual institution of the police. Um, I don't know if I describe myself as an abolitionist, but that's probably close. I just really, um, I, I don't stand with the police. I don't believe blue lives matter. I think that, well, okay, that sounds like I want all cops to die, which maybe I shouldn't <laughs> go on record as having said that, but, uh, no, I think I get, I know what you're it, getting at. Yeah, I, think. I don't, I don't excuse police brutality and I think a lot of Brooklyn Nine-Nine really um tries to glide over that and it's pretty much ignored yes yeah and when it's not ignored it's it's sometimes clumsily handled uh there's also a lot of um glorification of I think the militarization of the police and yeah uh, yeah mostly just um yeah, I'm reminded of, like, the, the training episodes, the, like, yes, paintball stuff. Yes, yes, absolutely. And, like, all the, where the, um, actually, the one episode, they, they finally, in, like, season four, they did a token episode that was, like, Terry gets uh, stopped by a cop rather violently when he's doing mm. something very innocuous. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of talk about, like, racial profiling, but that's one episode and that's kind of the only episode where they address it. And the episode that follows it, literally the next episode, has them going to a convention for cops where they show off the latest militarized, <laughs> the militarized technology. Like, Ooh. Rose is like, I got to try a heat ray last year. And I'm like, that's not something I want the police to have. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a very uh, salient point, I yeah. think. I mean, and it's like, I don't, I mean... I guess you don't have to make a sitcom about the police, but I don't, don't know how you handle a sitcom about the police with and and acknowledge like those yeah. yucky things. So it's like I don't know, yeah. maybe it's just not a thing you can really yeah. achieve. I don't think it was a good idea, but the execution is sadly the best we could have hoped for. I I do like the show. I really wish I didn't. Um, I just <laughs> I mean, think it's, it's funny it's on well its own written, merits. It's fun. Yeah. yeah. Like the characters. Well, and that's are super why it's lovable. the perfect the perfect topic for this podcast is you know we love something, but it has issues. Yeah. Yes. That's the sort issue of our... being like what it is, uh, <laughs> just in general. Yeah, yeah. We definitely try to acknowledge when things that we enjoy are. Yeah. To use a a, a term problematic, like. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I know just, it's a word. Yeah. It's a hell of a word, but like I think you know, they literally use that. In, in an episode of Brooklyn Nine-Nine recently. They did. <laughs> they did. A Boyle, uh, and this is uh, not a spoiler-free podcast, as we mentioned at the top, but Boyle has a podcast about uh, Jake, and they were talking about, like, uh, you shouldn't listen to the episode Terry was on or whatever because it was problematic. And I'm like, <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay, gang. But yeah, because I mean, it is like a really enjoyable, fun show, like yeah. with really lovable characters. Like I gotta say, Captain Holt is absolutely my favorite. I love oh, those really? kinds of. Ca- I know it's like he's a weird character to have as a favorite, but yeah, like, but I, he's good. I, I love him, but he's be just my favorite. He cracks me up like every time. But I'm yeah. I'm weird. Like in Arrested Development, my favorite character is Lucille. She just That's makes me laugh. So incredibly hard. valid, though. <laughs> Lucille is excellent. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, she is wonderful. Yeah. She, I just, I love everything about her. But yeah, I know Captain Holt's a weird favorite character, but just like everything he says, everything that comes out of his mouth just makes me laugh very hard. Yeah, Andre Brauer, I don't know how to pronounce his last name, but he's I don't either. he does a really good job as Holt. Like I think sometimes his character, his characterization can be really inconsistent. Um, but yeah. I think agreed, he, agreed. He sells it so well that it doesn't really matter. <laughs> Kind of. uh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I'd say he gets more inconsistent, sort of, in the later seasons yes. when he's loosening up. I guess. Yeah. But then it's like, well, how how loose is he though? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Al- Alex, have you have have you watched much Brooklyn Nine Nine? I think I've watched 
for sure the entire first season and then just sort of here and there after that Mm -hmm, um mm -hmm. so i'm pretty familiar with like you know the the main cast and sort of their roles or whatnot or or what type of character they are um Mm -hmm. but yeah i I think i think it's a really in in a lot of ways positive as in terms of like certain character portrayals Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um but i would i would probably agree that you know it's not exactly a perfect show, but I mean, there there are so few out there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, not many perfect <laughs> shows. Yeah, They're, fair enough. The the weird issue I have with Brooklyn Nine Nine personally is that it is not, to borrow a word, problematic on it in a like a micro level. Like many shows yeah. would be like, oh, this this episode had a really bad trope, or this character, this aspect of this character is really bad. Yeah. The Somebody problem, did a yucky thing yeah, or something. The, yeah, the problem isn't, like, small, or it's not, like, uh, infrequent or just, like, forgivable. The problem is not in the show. It's what the show is, which is propaganda. Um, mm. I know that's kind of a big, like, a heady accusation to level against them, but it is, I think it's a little bit propaganda. No, I, I totally agree. Like, yeah. that's, I, I mean, and, and, and I'd say it's it's a, a, a really insidious form. I yes. mean, I, like, I don't want to be too heavy-handed with it, because I, I do think it is a lovely show that I enjoy, yeah. but, like, it's it's saying, like, yeah, look at these cops. They're just your friends. You saw yeah. Cops, your friends. And it's like, you know, I mean, disclaimers ahoy, like, yes, there are plenty of p- police officers who are good people. I've I've personally yeah. known some cops that were wonderful folks that I do feel make people safer. But like it is an establishment that is really troubling, and this That's just sort great... of makes it not seem troubling. Yeah. That's like exactly what the show is, though, because they're <laughs> yeah. individual good cops, but the entire institution, like why it exists, is awful. Like its purpose <laughs> is awful. Yeah, its effects and uh, yeah. yeah. It, yeah. Well, yeah. And there's, uh, so I was uh, browsing the the Wikipedia page just so I ha- like have. That's, I like to have the Wikipedia pages open so I can like just have something to focus focus on one while we're talking. Mm-hmm. Um, and it looks like uh, during like a, a Comedy Central roast or something, Bill Hader was saying um, before the show started, talking to Andy Samberg, um, like what happens when you run out of funny crimes. <laughs> yeah. And he say, he says a really sort of true but awful quote he says um what happens when brooklyn 99 has to deal with a rape i don't think um, they ever i don't think yeah, they'd they, ever do that they yeah and then, they and then the and quote <laughs> the, they shouldn't and won't but but that's also like if you sort of tie it into other police shows like uh svu or something mm-hmm. like that like those are real yeah. topics that police have to deal with so it's like it's a it's that, a really weird fantasized it, version of yeah, it's the a, police. It is, yeah. It's a cutesy whitewashed version of the police. Uh they usually the most serious crimes, there's some murders, but they're like whimsical murders. Um Yeah. Yeah, very impersonal and Yeah. But like that that, that yeah. reminds me of like um just in like psych when people they'll be like a corpse laying on the ground and he's like quipping about it and i'm like dude that's a human life like can we just hold off on the puns for a sec oh they do that on all the cop shows like john mulaney has a whole bit about that (laughs) he does he does csi really like founded that whole thing yeah the the puns and all that with dead bodies yeah yeah, it's 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 always a little queasy for me, but like that's why I had to stop watching Psych. It was mm. just a little too cavalier about human life. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, okay, like so, how do you do a sitcom? You, like, can you just not really do a sitcom that deals with like that I don't kind think, of stuff? I don't think you should personally. <laughs> um, I wish Brooklyn Nine Nine was about literally anything else. Um, <laughs> I think yeah, it's. Can, yeah. Can these lovely characters that are my friends just go and, like, work in an entirely different industry, please? Yeah, no, <laughs> I, I like, and the problem is they all have, like, different skills that would apply to, like, way better jobs. Like, I can imagine Boyle is a food critic. Like, Rosa, <laughs> R- 
Rosa could be like a manager at the container store, you know? <laughs> Gina and Gina and um Jake, they could be YouTubers, you know? Like Yeah. All right, it's time for our AU. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Brooklyn 99 AU. Everything yeah. is fixed. Ugh. <laughs> it's going to take a while. <laughs> yeah. Well, and and so and they've done like some interesting stuff recently. Um like they seem to be trying harder to acknowledge these questionable things. Yeah. But it just doesn't quite seem to cut the mustard. It's it's anathema to their show because I think a, like eventually they're going to bump up against the fact that oh, we really shouldn't be making this. I think they're going to get to a point where they're like, "Oh, this was like this whole uh, like, I, this whole idea was just, uh, kind of doomed from the start. I'm worried that they're gonna maybe bump up against that. Well, not worried. Hopeful. Um, <laughs> but, yeah. Yeah. I, I would like to address something. You know, I said the show was propaganda. I, I would like to append that, um, it is very specifically neoliberal propaganda in that, Yes. It kind of, yes. Uh, I would like to read a tweet that really reminds me of Brooklyn Nine-Nine's ethos, if I may. <laughs> Please um, do. It's, like, a pretty well-known tweet uh, by Twitter user History and Flicks. Um, and it's like, conservatives say, let's round up Muslims and put them in camps. Liberals, hire more women guards. So it's kind of like... <laughs> It's kind of like addressing the wrong issue. Yeah, it's a very sort of diverse, like, thoughtful cast. You know, you've got a lot of people of color, a lot of people with different backgrounds and identities, uh, but they're cops, so. Yeah. (laughs) It's like, it's like partial credit. (laughs) Yeah, here's how we fix this, this situation with the police. The captain is a gay black man. Well, I mean, I like that part, but no, that doesn't fix the thing. Yeah. (laughs) It's just that that fixes a different problem. Yes. Well, and even even the episode where it like shows him rising through the ranks, like, mm-hmm. he, I don't know. It's it almost like points that out. It's like nobody even paid attention, so he just got there. Yeah. <laughs> like which he is was like, yeah. Yeah, he was like uh, something like um, I was gonna. He was gonna make a, a task force. Uh, oh, that's for, right. Like, LGBT he... cops, and he's like. They didn't, they didn't say no, so I just yeah, did it. They just laughed, <laughs> they just laughed at, at him. when he said, I'm yeah. going to make, like, a group. Yeah. Um, yeah. The alliance thing, yeah. Yeah, it's... And it, I mean, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a sticky wicket because... Yeah, I was going to so, say. It's so easy to just, like, watch it and just, like, turn your brain off and enjoy it because it is really cute and fun like I one thing I've been thinking about as like I've gone back and watched more of it um this week is that like I'd say the sitcom I would most compare it to would be something like Scrubs where it's like this workplace ensemble comedy um you know a single camera workplace ensemble Mm -hmm. um that's mostly very sort of whimsical and and lightweight um but whereas when Scrubs sort of went serious it was always in the direction of melodrama it was always tragic Mm -hmm. um and that's fair it's a hospital hospitals are places where tragedies occur but well so uh, are precincts but it's a different kind of tragedy yes in brooklyn 99 when it when it goes serious it's always very sort of uh heartwarming and and you know it's, it's always yeah well but it's 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 always people saying i love you to each other which i You know me, I'm a sucker for that kind of shit. I am too! Like, I really appreciate that kind of sincerity. I think it's really wonderful, and they do those things really, really well. The interpersonal relationships and building this cast of people who, despite their differences, really love and respect each other. And I couldn't agree more. That actually Uh, circles back. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, 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 no. I I was just babbling. You go. (laughs) Well, aren't we all? I was going to circle back to a point where most of the notes I have here that I did while literally taking a week to marathon this entire show again. um, Oh my gosh. Yeah, I'm serious about my TV. Um, (laughs) Also, like, I've run out of things to watch when I'm drawing. Uh, But uh, most of my notes are about how this is just propaganda, but I also, I was planning to kind of engage with the show on its own merits, um, whether or not that's a good idea, uh, but 
I wrote down fictive kinship, which is kind of like a found family sort of deal. And Mm -hmm. a lot of this, like, you see eight shades of this, like, really early on, like, in the Thanksgiving episode. I don't remember if this is the first or second season, but Jake, like, toasts everyone as, like, uh, my two Latina sisters, my two black dads, Gina. Yes. (laughs) Oh, I loved that. That was so cute. It was so cute. And when Rosa is, like, confronted with the fact that Kevin and, um, Holt have a sex life, she's like, Rosa, gross, that's our dads! (laughs) (laughs) I love that one. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, and so, I mean, and that makes me really long for it to just be anything but what it is because they do yeah that's the theme of this episode that we're recording is i wish it wasn't this well and romeo romeo wherefore art thou romeo (laughs) the sad thing is i don't see andy sandberg as maybe somebody who's willing to like change things up in order to fix it well, um, I don't think that this show could. Like, it no, would just have to have been something well, else from the start. My only, my only, like, thought is, like, oh, we're out of stories here, so now let's, like, I don't know, something happens to the building, so now they're all out of work, and now they all work somewhere that's, else. That's happened at least, like, three times on the show. You know, the, the series, <laughs> the season premiere of the fifth season was about him being in jail, which I think was really mishandled but i was talking to my mom about this because i talked to my mom about everything um and it's lovely i was like so i haven't seen this yet i'm working up to it and she's like it was very weird uh (laughs) i remember she said that uh when it premiered the episode literally the first episode she says it is a show that doesn't know what it wants to be it's trying to have it both ways it's trying to be a serious (laughs) cop procedural while also being a funny workplace sitcom and i think nowhere was that kind of tonal mismatch exemplified than in the fifth season premiere yeah like they just want to be the office about cops but you can't you can't you can't (laughs) i I see them as being parks and a wreck about cops. well fair enough because it's very positive and lovely and nice instead of like mean spirited and rude but (laughs) not to say i don't enjoy the office but oh yeah Parks and Rec is the is the fluffier, friendlier, yeah. sort of positive and, and loving version of Weren't that. Were these well, shows made by the same people? I seem to remember The Office and Parks and Rec had the same showrunner, or at least I, creator. I, I would think so. I don't know that for certain, but, like, how could they not? Like, yeah. they're the same thing. They're the same thing. So. Yeah. <laughs> well, and yeah, the both okay, of those examples about... are, like, Parks and Rec's department, which is, like, has no teeth. <laughs> yeah yeah and then they, like, a paper company chose it. yeah a paper company oh no a paper cut <laughs> yeah yeah how much hair? yeah they're i mean they're both sort of based in very innocuous organizations yeah. and so they're free to just like do what they want to yeah. where <laughs> for brooklyn 99 it just sort of invites this it's just got this underlying troubling it's a, it's a bad idea of a show <laughs> series it's just the worst <laughs> idea like, I wish that they had just, like, taken these characters and put them somewhere else. Yeah, just, just, and, just like, drop, them, drop them in another series, please. <laughs> like, I, like, I want, I mean, because whoever's writing this show, whoever's running this show, like, they're doing something really special when they are doing something special, and I want them to do that special thing, uh, but, like, maybe in a different show with a different setting. <laughs> so, I can't yeah, agree I would, more. I would want to watch that show. Yeah, because like you know, before watching this, I was not a b- big like Samberg fan. Like I was like, yeah, he whatever. Is he's so a, good in this show. He's it's just vexing. The biggest <laughs> darling. Like I just want to give him all the hugs. I love yeah. him. I used he's to so think sweet. He was pretty annoying and broy, and he kind of leans into that a little bit in Brooklyn Nine Nine. But he doesn't mug as much as I thought he would. So he's I mean, because it's of the, a lot of sincerity, which surprised me. One of the co-creators of the show um, is best known for his work on NBC comedy series The Office and Parks and Recreation. Well oh. then, <laughs> bingo. Hit that one on the head. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, and it's not SNL, so like Sandberg yeah. can't do the things that he would do on SNL because you can't Good. get away with that <laughs> on a regular TV show. You could get away with a lot on SNL because nobody watches that show. <laughs> you would be correct. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you're not wrong. 
<laughs> I just, I don't know the last time I watched SNL. Nobody. The only time anyone pays attention to that show is during like election season, which That's frankly true. is like then it's an just, entire it's just year out of every four years. It's just years. clips on YouTube. Yeah. Nobody watches. The, it's yeah. too late. It's inconvenient. I can't stay up that late anymore. That's for sure. I'm 21 <laughs> and I can't stay up that late. Well, and people that do stay up that late aren't sitting home watching TV. No, who's going to stay up till midnight to watch Saturday Night Live? What is... <laughs> it's not good anymore. Oh, I wonder what that Alec Baldwin's going to do this week. Yeah, something oh. that troubles me. <laughs> <laughs> There's another person that's very, very funny if troubling. Yes. Like, as a human, he just sucks a lot. Yeah. But, like, damn if he isn't funny. Like, oh, gosh. Uh, like, another great workplace sitcom that is totally like innocuous is um 30 rock yeah 30 oh. rock like it's oh, i, I, I love just, that show i i liked 30 rock there's i have an issue with sitcoms where i only think the first three seasons are good okay but well, that's usually the case but... yeah <laughs> 30 rock went completely off the wall and you could see some shades of what would l- later become kimmy schmidt oh yeah where it's yeah just it's cartoon. I like cartoony, but it's not a very good execution at all. Um, so I, I didn't like it. I liked it more when it was it was kind of more grounded. Um, well, and I, I'd say that's the trend with a lot of sitcoms. And I think yeah. that the Brooklyn, Brooklyn Nine-Nine, Nine-Nine is starting s- to fall prey to that. Yeah, like the the stakes got higher kind of every season, which is what tends to happen. But they've actually handled seasonal rot better than most sitcoms I've seen. They're on their fifth season, and they're still pretty good. I think their weakest moments are the season's beginnings and ends, because that's when they always try to do the most, most off-the-wall shit, and they're not great at it sometimes. Yeah, and they're they're managing to mostly avoid the sort of, like, hyper cartoonification of their characters like a lot yes. of sitcoms the characters will start turning into parodies of themselves yep. flanderization is what that's called that's the word i was looking for yes yes they uh, you know there are plenty i mean scrubs fell prey to that hard it was like, very cartoony hard. to begin with if i remember correctly like, if you watch the first season it's kind of not like especially the pilot it's weird like there's this scene in the in the pilot where JD is getting ready for his first day at the hospital and he's kind of like goofing around in the bathroom and he's got like a voiceover that's like okay when i'm nervous i get a little silly sometimes uh-huh. and like it's like totally acknowledging like yeah he's just doing this because he doesn't know what to do with himself and then later he's just like a crazy looney tunes character well and even in the <laughs> in, in, in the like the um direction of the final seasons it's like everything's like super saturated and oh yeah Yeah. that's 30 rock too yeah that too and the office the office went fucking bonkers it really did like i didn't watch that so bad no it's so bad i was i'm on the fifth season in my rewatch and i'm ready to call it quits it's it gets it gets rough. They have anyway. a couple episodes in the later seasons of The Office that are really worth watching, but the season as a, the seasons yeah. as a whole are not. I think that's a Brooklyn Nine Nine problem where there are moments and episodes worth watching, but sometimes I think somebody said that this is a perfect show to make gifts of, but not the mm-hmm. best to watch. Yeah. And boy, does Tumblr do that! <laughs> like I, I like I would. They're so they're like half of the tumblr memes are brooklyn 99 references yeah <laughs> well it's it's i think it's very much uh, engineered to kind of be relatable um uh, and they uh, they reference they reference things they seem more plugged into the zeitgeist than most sitcoms which is something that i kind of don't like because i don't want to hear a sitcom character screaming the word cuck when I watch TV, I watch TV oh. to be unplugged from that. That's like if I open the newspaper and Beetle Bailey was like talking about fucking fidget spinners. I don't. <laughs> I want to be unplugged from the zeitgeist. That's where I go. I go to antiquated forms of media. Well, yeah. but, no, but it's also it. like I, I'm thinking of like the uh, sitcoms of the past in like the the um, 80s, especially where sure they were like the family shows where you go to unplug but then every once in a while there's like this hard-hitting episode that like honestly i've heard from a lot of people like change their opinions on certain topics 
like very special episodes. Yeah. <laughs> that's what that's what the episode where it's called Moomoo, that's where the episode where Terry is profiled uh I think that's a very special episode. Yeah, it rings that it's way. It's really funny to hear Andy Samberg's serious voice. It just kind of reminds me of um do you guys know Tim and Moby? No. Oh, uh, they were this Flash cartoon that was designed to teach grade schooler stuff and um <laughs> They're usually pretty goofy uh, and innocuous, but they had to do an episode about, like, the science of death. Oh. And it's like those creepy pastas where it's, like, suddenly, oh. suddenly, uh, like, this Gravity Falls character turned to me and started talking about death. And that's exactly what it was like. Oh, man. I, I, I'm <clears throat> sad that I missed out on, like, I guess Alex and I, because we're just a few or- years older than you, like, I think yeah. maybe we just missed them. Like, we oh. were in middle school by then, so. Bummer. Maybe well, we just <laughs> shout out to my Tim and Moby friends. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta say, please tell us that you, you at least got some Bill Nye in your life. Oh, of course I did. Bill, 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 okay, Bill. Okay, good. He's 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 timeless. Every he generation is. needs their their Bill indoctrination. But uh... oh, oh, talk about indoctrination! Look what episode we're making. I was just trying to segue back to some points about propaganda because yeah uh, i'm sorry like it's literally all my notes is get, like, get propaganda, to it propaganda um i want to talk about it kind of being an ouroboros of propaganda because they repeatedly <laughs> mention that jake became a cop because of die hard and it's kind of like <laughs> it's basically yeah, i hadn't thought of that <laughs> it's basically a kid who was raised on cop propaganda or copaganda i won't make that joke again but you can uh, if you want. It's okay. Well, yeah, but he grew <laughs> up with media that valorized the police and valorized maybe police brutality or, like, extrajudicial use of police resources. Um, Which he's now, just really into and, as a person. Yeah. And, <laughs> well, yeah, there's, there's, like, parts where they're like, let's get tanks, let's put on riot gear, let's gas ourselves for fun. And it's just yeah. like... Okay, what are they gonna do next? Are they gonna turn fire hoses on each other as a fun prank? Like that's not okay. <laughs> oh god, yeah, yeah that's troubling. <laughs> well, and it's also sad because like they have a, a, not an opportunity, but like that's certainly probably the truth for a lot of police officers. Yeah, it's like that's how they got into it, or their family yeah. was in the force, and so it's like that sort of they grew up by idolizing the police. Yeah, and. So this show, there's truth in his story, but they treat it... Like it's a good thing. Like it's a joke. Yeah. Or like, yeah, exactly. Like, because there's a literal episode where they reenact the plot of Die Hard, basically. Yeah, the the department store Yeah, thing. the department store robbers, um, where they turn out to be Canadian instead of German. <laughs> that has a funny little twist yeah. there. <laughs> yeah, and you know, that makes me sort of wonder, like... We do have some, you know, some of, obviously this, this show is a, is a contemporary example of, uh, propaganda for the police being a, you know, a well-loved cultural touchstone yeah. for our generation, but I wonder, like, how recruitment numbers will maybe shake out in the next several years, like, over the next generation, because that, that I, is... I, I, a very I feel like, good question. You know, as a generation, we're questioning more and more the the validity yeah. of this organization, and I wonder if f- fewer people, you know, fewer young people now are going to grow up to want to be cops because of our newer views well, on the institution. Let me share my theory about that, is that I think within my peer group, I would not know anybody who would want to be a cop, but I think that's very much... A proof of me living a sheltered existence because I think more of America is being emboldened to prop up terrible institutions. More of America is being emboldened to be outright racist. Um, That's true. So I think there's way more dissatisfied, like, youths looking to kind of take out their anger on the world and kind of exert their authority because there's kind of a perception of white males. They feel like they're losing their authority. When really other people are gaining the authority that they had and they have to share it. Yeah. It's like yeah, that. So it's, it's almost like. Like that Bo Burnham um, song, Straight White Man. Uh, we used to have all the land and money. And we still do, but it's not as fun now. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think there's like a quote that goes when. Um, 
when other people start to enjoy the privilege, it feels like it's being taken away from you. Yeah. But it's yeah. not. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of that feeling is going to fuel people into becoming tools of the state and becoming more authoritarian. I don't think Brooklyn Nine-Nine will embolden people to be cops. I think the people no. watching it are those inside our bubble. Um, but but maybe, so, yeah, it's, it's more like folks yeah. like us being... Um, sort of softened to the idea of the yeah, police. Yeah, li- like hand-wringing liberals. Uh, this is a very liberal show, I would say. And I mean liberal not in the terms of it's lefty. I mean liberal in the terms of it's kind of hanging out in that Overton window. Um, yes. Where it's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> I'm so sorry. I'm losing my voice as we speak. Oh, and no, it does kind of... I am... It's kind of adding a sexy edge to my voice, which <laughs> I'm not... I haven't made a secret that I hate my own voice, but I love to talk. You're reminding me of, like, speaking of sitcoms, um, Sick Voice Phoebe on Friends. I have never seen Friends. Or Scrubs. That's that's crazy. I mean, like, yes. I'm a Seinfeld guy. Well, look at you. Hmm. And a Frasier guy. I've never seen Cheers. Oh, no. I've seen Frasier. Okay, I'm I'm dropping off the call. Well, well, I didn't Sorry, realize we I, had the intellectual our... elite in here. Ooh, ooh. I don't... Wait, isn't the show My... about literary, like, merit? Is yeah, this no. not a show for elites? Yeah, no. I'm just saying, like, I have a friend who loves Frasier, and I just do not get it. So I yeah, always fair. argue with him, so... No, I, I enjoy Frasier. I do, I do. But I it's love... crazy to me that you missed friends. Well, again, I'm, like, slightly younger than you, and... Yeah. I, I think... Fair... Seinfeld is like a more Jewish version of Friends, from what I've been told. It is. I, don't know. Uh, I mean, I, I have a Jewish I would say it's dad, quite, and he loved quite, it. Quite a bit angrier as well. Yeah, I had an angry Jewish dad growing up, so that explains it. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it all go. makes sense. It all adds up. That's yeah. fair. That's fair. No, children are not responsible for their own sort of cultural yeah. uh, exposure. So induction, yes, indoctrination. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm very, I'm very apprehensive to see like what kind of changes, uh, Brooklyn Nine Nine affects. Like, I don't, I genuinely don't know what to expect as in terms of how it's going to shape people's minds. Really, I think the only thing it's going to do is kind of prop up the idea that cops that cops can be really sympathetic, and that everything's more or less okay. I don't think it's going to do anything other than reinforce ideas we already have, but it shouldn't be doing that. Um, yeah yeah we've got these well but two... it also the longer it goes on i think more people uh like you're saying i think you said your mom was like oh it was weird and uncomfortable yeah i think more people will start to notice that well i and think then yeah start to think about why they're gonna run like i said they're gonna like eventually run up against something that they can't tackle and they're gonna eventually realize it was a bad idea yeah, I, I wonder if it's going to give. Like, I wonder when the Tumblr kids will turn on it. Because, well, like, that's got to happen, right? Like, I've seen a lot of leftists in fighting about it. And I've seen yeah. a lot of people wringing their hands about, like, oh, whether it's okay to enjoy this show. And I'm sure I'll get some flack for, like, not being lefty enough. Because that is the cardinal sin in leftist spaces, is not being <laughs> intense enough about it. Um, and, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm going to be mistaken for, like, a cop sympathizer. And maybe I am for enjoying this show. That makes me very sad but it might be true see um, I, d- I don't think so because I, I mean you know our, our sort of mission here is to be critical about things that you enjoy and it's I think it's okay to enjoy the things that you enjoy about things that have problems as long as you like yeah. understand and acknowledge the problems that are there and I'll be real I've enjoyed a lot worse there was a time when I really <laughs> liked Always Sunny um oh uh, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. so I I like a lot worse I just think <laughs> it's Again, Always Sunny is bad for maybe, like, episodic reasons. reasons. It's not the concept that's bad. The concept is literally just four assholes. No, five assholes. Um, Yeah, that sit in a bar. It's like, okay, you can do that. That's right. But the concept of Brooklyn Nine-Nine, it doesn't have, like, issues besides the overarching concept. Because the overarching concept is, what if cops but diverse and fun? Yeah... Yeah. It's just a bad idea with impeccable execution, which is the weirdest thing I've ever heard. Yeah. It, it, it doesn't often shake out that way, does it? Like, no. I 
I've execution seen should good be the hard ideas. Part. Yeah, I've seen good ideas with terrible execution on TV, but I've never seen just the most broken idea with the most brilliant execution ever. And I think that's insidious and a little dangerous, but I still love the show, God help me. And yeah. I don't know what to do about it. Just uh, keep telling everyone about the problems of it. <laughs> yeah. Watch it while saying, this is a problem, this is well, a problem. yeah, and I don't give it my money, so my, my one solace in enjoying things that are objectively terrible is that I always pirate shit, so I never give anybody my money. There you go. <laughs> That's an ethical argument for pirating shit. That's how you fight <laughs> back. Okay, you guys do not know the lengths I went to to watch this show. Oh, legally. no. I don't know how to torrent, so literally I was just going on, like, watchonline.biz.co.ar. Oh, no, like, you, oh, got every, that's, you got that's, every computer virus. No, because so true I, to my life. I, I have a Mac, and uh, if I had a PC, I would be dead by now. But I have a Mac. <laughs> yeah, pray for me. Pray for yeah, me. <laughs> I can't play any video games on this piece of shit, but I do not get Russian viruses. Uh, yeah, they would have already spread to your body. <laughs> yeah. No, my computer would have exploded, like, strong bad style at this point. <laughs> yeah, I, I just, in order to, like, get sort of brushed up, I just got, like, a Hulu free trial. <laughs> oh, buddy. That's actually, I literally did that for The Good Place, which is a great show. It's kind of like what Brooklyn Nine-Nine would be if it was good. A little bit. <laughs> Good and very high concept. You know, um, I haven't I haven't checked that one out yet. I know that I need to. It's excellent. I saw the one episode season, at work. The first season is on Netflix, and it's really fantastic, in my opinion. It, it really handles its diverse cast well. Of course, the main character is, uh, like, Kristen Bell, like a blonde white woman. But I think they do a really good job of having a diverse cast, which Brooklyn Nine-Nine, for the most part, also does. But it's troubling yeah. that they have that. Um, oh yeah, I mean it's like we were saying earlier. Like they, you know, they they fixed up the wrong but problem, not that not the problem. They hired yeah. more women guards, but <laughs> yes, they didn't get rid of the camps. So yeah, I don't know how to feel about that. Besides bad, but it's everything I've wanted in a show except for the overarching concept. It's a show where the humor is usually derived from. I mentioned this um, when I was on another podcast, um, but. Uh, I really want to show where the humor is derived from the love that the characters have and not from characters hating each other or annoying yeah. each other. No, I agree. Have this you seen... is that show. Well, have you seen the show, the sitcom Raising Hope? No. Okay, because that's one that I, like, that's one of the first ones that, like, I, because re- I was sort of thinking about that idea at the time of, like, these sort of, so much comedy is mean-spirited, you know, yeah. like, The Office and things like that, where it's, like, the jokes come from, like, people yeah. being cruel to one another. Yeah. Uh, and then I saw Parks and Rec, and I was like, oh, you can be, like, nice and funny. Um, yeah. But Raising Hope is this sitcom about this guy who sort of, this young dude who sort of ends up having custody of a of a baby daughter he didn't realize he had how, like how are there so many shows about men being forced to raise children i, I think know, that's well, what two and a half men is i think that's what three men and a baby was that's definitely what full house was yeah it's because oh my gosh a man being the sole child care provider what I, so there is that. but so he like he like just had a one night stand with this chick who ended up like going to prison and so he became like the custodian of the child is and that that's the concept they went with, huh? Yes, she's a murderer. Cool. So, but oh. it's it's about him and his <laughs> it's about him and his weird family, and then they have this baby. I, and most of the com- I mean, they're because like the, the the great thing about this family is that they're just like they're just kind of dumb, silly people, but they all love each other very, very that's much. That's like Bob's Burgers, I think. Yeah, the dumb, meanest- silly people. The meanest it gets on Bob's Burgers is they're just confused by one another. I uh-huh, think it's but- it's less that Bob hates his children more than he's he's he doesn't understand them. Like he doesn't understand Jean. He doesn't understand Tina. Yeah, um, but he loves them. Yeah, for, so for Raising Hope, you know, most of the comedy is just derived about, you know, oh, these silly people, look at this predicament they've gotten themselves into because they're just so silly. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, like, they're very supportive and loving of each other, and I, yeah. we need we and, need more of that. Yeah, and Brooklyn Nine-Nine provides that, but in a place where I don't think it should. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yes, I think just does. 
we're repeating ourselves here because we're just saying like this is a great show with just the worst concept. Yes. And that's I think... just kind of what it boils down to, but maybe we should Oh, speaking of boil, that's one of my <laughs> points is that there's very much they really love the found family trope and I God bless them for that, because I'm a sucker for that kind of thing. But, uh, yeah, anyone, you followed me on Twitter, you know this by now. I do, uh, I know. But, um, I really love, uh, uh, that Boyle is so enthusiastic about adopting. Um, and Jake yeah. actually, Jake, who has, like, father issues, actually told him in one episode, you know you could adopt, because DNA is not the only thing that makes somebody into a father. I had a really shitty father, and look mm-hmm. where that got me. Um, yeah, that's that's the episode where they're trying to get his sperm back, right? Yes, hostage <laughs> situation is what that is called. <laughs> um, that's the episode. They, like, um, that is, also, like, they do a lot of episodes that are just about their personal issues, they do do, like, procedural comedy, like, it is a very fine line to tread, and my mom says it, it can be very confused, um, because those are two genres that don't mesh, but I think they do a pretty good job mixing procedural and comedy, but again, that's such a hard thing to do, and I doubt that anyone should really attempt it. Um, yeah. But Boyle has really kind of epitomized the idea of the found family, because not only has he adopted Nikolash, He's all, did I pronounce that right? I think I did. No, it's uh, Nikolaj. Nikolaj. Ni- Nikolaj. No, it's Nikolaj. <laughs> uh, yeah. Not only has he adopted a Latvian son, but he has also adopted Gina. Although there is some weirdness there. He's, yeah. That's... He's always kind of incesting it a little bit, which I Just... don't love. But Yeah, yeah. That's... The, the Boyle family is really cute. I'm glad they introduced it. Because yeah, his dad is it, such such a cutie. <laughs> oh yeah, um, but yeah, there's definitely a lot about how family doesn't need to be linked by DNA, and there's a lot about just how you can be adopted by your friends, and I think that's beautiful, and I think it 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 is definitely the kind of narrative we need to see more. Um, yeah, there there are for sure things to admire about this show. Oh, like, tons. Problems aside, it's 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 a really sweet and positive yeah. show. Yeah, it's just and, got and a good energy. It's funny, in my opinion. Um, yeah, maybe not everyone would agree with me. I I'm sure people would struggle with maybe like the Family Guy esque like cutaway gags. Um, yeah, I I mean, and like as long as they are like, I mean. They're pretty good, though. I think they're funny. The problem with Family Guy's cutaway gags, I feel, is that mostly it's just, like, a way to throw in an irrelevant joke. Whereas they kind of do I'm... that. I don't know. They I mean, I, th- I feel like it's always sort of to make a point about yeah, the thing. that's um, true. I mean, because, like, uh, with Family Guy, it's always like, oh, man, this is terrible. Just like the time that I oh, drove yeah. my car into the White House. And it's like, okay, that ha- driving your car into the White House is irrelevant to this. You're just, it, Brooklyn Nine-Nine just, like, gives other examples of the actual oh, thing they're talking God, about. God, you saying White House caused a worm <laughs> to manifest in my brain? Because I, re- I imagined that what if Brooklyn Nine-Nine took place in the White House? Like, it was a West Wing? But then <laughs> I realized... That would be like nice feet. Yeah. And that <laughs> nice would be feet. Fun. Yeah, I don't well, think this is already would like, work if it was yeah. nice. <laughs> yeah. I wonder. I wonder too, but yeah. like, Veep only works but, because it's getting meaner and meaner. Yeah. Can we brainstorm like what other place these people could work at? I was thinking. Of, what about like a, a fire department? Show? Is that better? That would be good. Yeah, except. Be- and I, I, I don't think know. It's great, fires, it's... fires are kind of sad. That's true. They're kind of, but so are crimes, and they deal <laughs> yeah, with that. And that's yeah, true. so, at least you know you've got the action aspect because that's a big part of you know what the show leans on. It's like these people, and they like to do their action stuff, and so they yeah. could still have the action, still have the heroism. But and Terry would make a really good firefighter. He really would. I'll just say that right now. <laughs> yeah, he'd look great. Plus, 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 <laughs> yeah. firefighters gonna do. I mean, cops do too, but like a lot of like community outreach stuff. And yeah. like volunteers, they, there's. I feel like it would be very similar in the whole premise, just way less gross. Oh, also they could just be private eyes, like just 
just solving, we detect- like, yeah. interpersonal. They both, they have both the show, the cops in the show both hate firefighters and private detectives, <laughs> but yeah. I think they could be both. Um, well, they, I mean, they hate them because they're parallel organizations, yeah. so that's why it, yeah. it translates well, but they also have an animosity. Yeah. I just had the grossest thought. What if instead of police, they were the FBI? That's <sighs> terrible, and I hate it. It's terrible, but, like... <laughs> I don't think there is an FBI show that's been comedy, and that's kind of like. I want to see. That's good. I want to see how awful that would be. Well, yes, for sure. (laughs) But like, how awful of a show would that be? I think the only way that would happen if the is if the FBI funded it, and they absolutely would. <laughs> That's actually that is a question. That is a question about Brooklyn Nine Nine that I have is what relationship does it have with the police? Um, oh, yeah, and that is, that is like, interesting. You you hear about a lot of sci-fi and stuff like that that's funded by the military industrial complex. Yeah. Like for yes. example, a recent Marvel comic funded by a war machine. Uh, not the war machine. That's a Marvel <laughs> hero. I realize that's confusing. Um, <laughs> I think that's right. I don't read comics, but no. yeah, yeah, Northrop Grumman or something funded a Marvel comic, and there's been an uproar about it. And so I'm wondering, like, well, how yeah, I mean, much has there's a lot a lot of films that are yeah, like made like in what kind of with... is this propaganda that's just like pointless ass kissing, or is it propaganda that was paid for? That I doubt it a, was. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. But, I'm sure it's received some payola. That's all I'm saying. Maybe it's the conspiracy theorist in me. <laughs> I wouldn't doubt it, but um, just based on the whole tone of the show, I don't know how yeah. many... Like, I, I can see police officers enjoying the show, but I can also see police officers, like, absolutely hating the show. Well, yeah. yeah, I mean, it's a little bit like, I, I have a, a grandma who's uh, been a nurse her whole life, and she can't watch um, doctor shows, because it's, she's just mm-hmm. like, that's not how it works, that's not how it works, that's not how it works, and so it oh, might just Oh, I was gonna be... say, what if Brooklyn Nine-Nine was a doctor show, but you just said Scrubs was that? Scrubs, yeah, I, it would be Scrubs, so. <laughs> it would be, I don't know, I had trouble watching Scrubs just because of all the sound effects, like, whenever Dr., I think his name was Cox, whenever he cracked his neck, I wanted to die. <laughs> Um, yeah, no, I mean, Scrubs is definitely a more sort of uh, yeah. absurd, heightened thing, but yeah. it is a, it is a sort of a similar concept of, like, this yeah. workplace comedy with a wacky protagonist and his best yeah. friend and the girl, and, <laughs> you know? And then, well, they and the, actually do female characters really well on this show. Oh, they Nine, absolutely which do. Which is, it's weird. Um, yeah, that's another thing that I really, really love about it, and it's part of that sort of positivity of the show, is you have these really different people who still love and respect each other. They, they sell diversity really well, which is troubling, because it's a show <laughs> about an institution that is meant to kind of stamp that out. Um, yeah, and like, uh, uh, sort of in a different direction, because you've got um, Amy and... Uh, Rosa. Oh, yeah, a- Amy and Rosa, who are, like, really different women. Like, as people, yeah. they their lives could not be more different, but they're still, like, great friends and love each other a lot. And that's yeah. really refreshing. Like, they, yeah. in another show, they would probably be pitted against one another. Like, Rosa that's wouldn't a, be able to well, stand Amy. they're both Latina women, too. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think Rosa might be a little bit of a stereotype. I am not Latino, um, so I don't know. But yeah, not, none of us are necessarily qualified to no, comment on I, that. No, I'm a little <laughs> nervous about me talking about this show because I will never be subject to police violence. I kind of really doubt it. I am, full disclosure, I'm white. <laughs> if you couldn't tell from, like, everything I say, um, but yeah, we're I'm all, white. we're all quite white. Uh, Alex, yeah. and I are, Alex and I are both blonde, so... Oh, okay. <laughs> well, so, uh, this, is, this is confusing because I'm the most ethnic person here. You That's are. That's never happened. Um, yeah <laughs> yeah i'm i'm jewish like jake um but which is also i love that because andy sandberg's jewishness has really crept into the show and i really appreciate it like the joke where he was trying to learn how to spin on his dj table and all he had was <laughs> klezmer records yes that that's so cute. funny um, that's very cute yeah i really love that um have you have um, you seen superstore Oh, no, I was actually gonna bring that up because it seems like it would be a good Brooklyn Nine-Nine alternative, Honestly, but I have no idea so, how good so it is. So here's the thing. It's pretty good, especially if you've ever worked retail. Like, you will just love it. Um, but I think... Honestly, they should change some of the cast for the cast of Brooklyn, not Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Like, um, the, the 
the lead male in the show, I don't really like him, and I think um, Andy Samberg would be better. <laughs> that is like a sentence no one's ever said. <laughs> the lead would be better if he was Andy Samberg. But Andy Samberg... Andy Samberg is confusingly good in Brooklyn Nine Nine. I, I want, I want to know, like, I want to see him go on to other things. Yeah, like I, I would love that. I, I think that he's got a lot ahead of him. I think that he could do other better he things. Seems kind of old though. I don't see him as somebody with like his co career ahead of him. Uh, he's not, not like not sixty. Like his whole... <laughs> yeah, he's still got okay. plenty. He's still got I'm... plenty of miles. Uh, yeah, that's true. I, I don't know. I just. I mean, I think he might be playing to type a little bit uh, here, yeah. um, and I, I'm worried he's going to pigeonhole himself. My worry is that, yeah. like a lot of comedians, he won't necessarily change with the times. Like if yes, you, if you, he's going to be If you think of a lot of, I like, think. late 90s, early 2000s, like, especially comedic movies, if you watch them now, uh. or, if, or if they come out with sequels, God forbid, a, all, like... Zoolander 2 um they just do not age and the comedic actors do not pay attention to what's actually going on in the world yeah what's weird is is Brooklyn Nine-Nine seems to be really trying to be with the times sometimes to its detriment like I mentioned with Scully and Hitchcock screaming cock and snowflake at each other but (laughs) <laughs> they really try to be current, and it seems like the show tries to be sensitive, but it's also kind of blind to its biggest flaw. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, I, it, I think it, its heart is in the wrong place, but everything else. And and I, I I mean, it's almost a sense of self-preservation. Like, they couldn't carry on if they acknowledged no. their, their most inherent problem. So they just have to do yeah. that or die. <laughs> it's not, it's it, not really, really an option. They really caught themselves in like you said it's a sticky wicket and that's exactly what I think what it would it's be like. really interesting to like yeah. interview the writers of the show and sort of like discuss yeah. with them like I wonder I wonder what the white writers room looks like I bet it's I mean it's got to be predominantly white this is Hollywood um yeah I really want to know like who is behind this um, yeah. Not like and I'm asking them and shaming them or like, but like or no. parading them through town square. I just want to know like what was making goes this your happen. Mind. <laughs> yeah, what goes through your mind? I really I wanted to have researched um kind of the background of the show. Like I wanted to know <clears throat> if it was like on maybe the government's or local police department's payroll, which sounds pretty tin hatty if I think about it. But it's not outside of the realm of possibility. Um, there might be a little kickback. There might be a little yeah. I just think that something the, the production of this show might be a very interesting thing to think about. Yeah, and just what it was like to pitch this show because I guarantee you it was pitched to a room full of white people. There is well, no that's way this the only... would be okay otherwise. Well, in Hollywood, is there yeah, any that's other the only rooms? rooms that yeah, exist exactly. in Hollywood. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's that's all the rooms. Those yeah. are the people with the money. So, yeah. Fuck. <laughs> well, uh, we've been talking for a long time. Yeah. Uh, so maybe we want to, I mean, does anybody have any sort of last thoughts they want to get no. in? No, my, my voice is given out. <laughs> <laughs> do we do we have any other, like, uh, sitcoms that we just want to profess well, you, our love for? You had mentioned... Bob's Burgers. Bob's Burgers, Bob's Burgers is, is wonderful. It's my favorite show <laughs> on television. Uh, Alex, you had mentioned you'd been watching something? Yeah, so I'd already seen the, the whole series before, but I was sick and was wanting some easy viewing. Um, it's called Shit's Creek. I haven't watched that, but it looks really cute. So it's on... I saw ads for that, and I was like, who watches this? Now <laughs> okay, I know. it's amazing. So um, it's on uh, Amazon Prime and on Netflix. The third season just yeah. added on there. It's originally on Pop TV, which nobody has. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, sorry. Wow. I just love learning about new channels. Yes. <laughs> it's a Canadian show. Oh, okay. It stars Eugene Levy. I love him. Um, I don't know him. You don't? So, He's Jewish. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? We all know each other. Uh, <laughs> I genuinely don't know. Um, uh, I, I, I don't the know. only example I can think of is like his oldest movie. <laughs> Well, yeah, he was in, like, American Pie and... Um, have not seen that. Best yeah, that's show? all right. You don't need to. Best in Show? Yeah, I've seen Best in Show. No, okay, you need to go watch Best in Show it. right now because he's <laughs> in I it as is... Yes. He's in it as is Catherine O'Hara, who is his co-star in Shit's Creek. 
Okay. You'll, you'd Maybe recognize I'll, her if you saw I'll her. I'll probably just watch. I'll probably just watch shit because yes. I don't have good. The That's a mind good place for movies. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Um, but it's actually uh, created by Eugene Levy's son, Daniel Levy. Um, oh, okay. And he's he's a gay That's man, cute. and it's like, oh, it's such a good. Okay, so basically, it's about a rich family that loses everything, and they have to go live in this town that the dad bought for his son as a joke. I love that. <laughs> Like a Arrested Development setup. Yes, you know? yes. Sort of a rich family sort of similar that lost to that. everything. Um, but they're like so entitled, but like in the most adorable, like oh, you don't know these things, sort of way. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, humanizing rich people is also a problem, but well, I yes. don't have as much of a problem with it as humanizing. Uh, <laughs> it's institutional violence. Not um, quite as troubling. But it has like yeah. it has some some good parts about it. Like like I said, uh, Daniel Levy, who like created the show. Um, He's gay in real life. His character in the show is pansexual, which is pretty cool. Hmm. Oh, really? Like, they say the word, they don't, like, do an orange is a new black where it's like, are you still the... I, I don't I don't remember if they say it outright, but, like, he, it's pretty clear he's uh, queer. Okay. He's demonstrably <laughs> pansexual. Well, I mean, he, he's demonstrably <laughs> gay, and then he has sex with a woman, so it's like... Huh. Yeah. Um, Pinteresting. But he's wonderful. He's, like, his personality is so, like, I don't know. You have to see it because it's so strange and wonderful. Uh, I mean, I will. Again, I ran out of stuff to watch while I draw. <laughs> well, and there's just, three. I'm enjoying. There's three whole seasons. Literally so all the time now. You've got some yeah, time. Oh. <laughs> anyway, I, I really recommend it. It's, like, cute and stupid, which is, like, I think the perfect combo for a sitcom. That's why they named Cupid that way. Cute and stupid. <laughs> there that was the dumbest joke I made today. I mean, week. we both laughed, so. Well, yeah, that's on you. <laughs> well, and, and now we have it recorded for posterity. God bless. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I guess the ultimate thing, I mean, it's, it's just important to remember to be thoughtful and critical about the things that you love because they can be doing some dangerous work um but that's not to say that it's like wrong to yeah. like things about them that's that's been my question this entire time is should i just not watch it and i don't think there's a good answer about how to enjoy things responsibly i just don't yeah. i think I, just... I think you just have to do whatever feels okay or makes sense to you so like you were saying yeah. that um you don't support the you know the the company that makes it by by watching it no. yeah, you, online so you don't uh, give that's an I don't option. even do that with shows i like <laughs> <laughs> well it's just sometimes um, hard to to get at them but yeah but i mean that's that's one way of doing it is you know not not giving them your money or your 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 ratings um also yeah. just letting people know like hey there's some amazing parts about this show and you should enjoy it. But also, Hey, let's also think about like what, what else we're taking in with this show and why we should, yeah. you know, talk about it together. Like we're talking about it now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. S trying to, trying to break it down and figure out what's, what yeah. it is about it that, that may be uh, a mistake. Because at the end of the, the day, yeah, but the idea is the show is the mistake. So it's, it's very difficult to have this argument <laughs> because about this the, particular show. The hard part is, like, we want to support um, people that are not supported by... I don't know how to word this. Um, no, I know what you're We want to make ourselves happy, but we also don't want to make other people's lives hell. Yeah. It, it's just difficult. Yes, it is. Um, it's a difficult show to engage with. It's a difficult idea to engage with is that something you like is actively harmful yeah um so uh, i don't know how actively harmful this is but it's very passively harmful which yeah. i think is the by i think it's the catchphrase of liberalism is passively hurtful um, yeah yeah <laughs> uh, yeah uh, yeah well okay so brooklyn 99 showrunners do something else set somewhere else <laughs> yes I don't care if you use the same characters. Don't acknowledge it. Give them slightly different names. Or just even like just like the whole make thing, it a dream the a whole time name. and they were all asleep in an office somewhere. Yeah. I mean, they started this this fifth season with a dream sequence, which confused me because they never did that before. 
That's a... They kind of... They broke their own rule, and it creeped me the hell out. But I wish they'd do that again. <laughs> I, listen, I don't like coma endings. I think they're bullshit and a cop-out. I would love a coma ending <laughs> for this show. Yeah, just a, a clean slate. A coma reset button. Yes. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that'll work. That'll do it. All right, we solved your problem, Brooklyn yeah, Nine-Nine. So there you go. Be, That's how you do it'll it. It'll be Jake wakes up in a coma. He was a firefighter the whole time, but he... <laughs> he watched a lot of Die Hard when he was a kid, so that's why he dreamed about it in his coma. D- Die Hard was on the TV in the hospital. There you all go. The time. <laughs> this is, and he's in the scrubs this is hospital. turning into one of my favorite fans. He's series. in the scrubs hospital. Oh my god! <laughs> and then he then he gets a job at the office office, but nobody's <laughs> fucking there. Um, it's all it's just like it's all the shitty new characters they brought in once oh, Sakura no. left. So <laughs> It's just, so you just have, like, more and more of the Brooklyn Nine-Nine characters being hired, and then you, like, push out um, everybody else. Like, you push out the weird, not Jim and not Dwight, you push out the weird, like, Robert California, or whatever the fuck his name was. But keep Kathy Bates, right? I, yeah, Kathy Bates was good in that, but she wasn't a good office She was not a great character, I don't think, but Kathy Bates is welcome anywhere. (laughs) <laughs> she was great on that show, but she was not great for that show. No. I think some of Fair. the characters they, they introduced were good, but they were not good office for characters. Sure, for sure. I have so many TV opinions. <laughs> well, then, I think that just means that you're going to have to come back sometime. We're going to get along just fine. Yeah, well, I'd love to be back. This is fun. Yay. Okay, awesome. So I guess um, to wrap up, let's just um, plug your stuff a little because I'd love to... I'd love to do that plug my stuff. let's plug your uh, stuff oh. <laughs> um. <laughs> oh, we built up too much of a port overload overload tension. <laughs> too much tension here we gotta we gotta decompress yeah. uh so yeah so where should people go to find you and your things they they shouldn't um <laughs> i don't want you mentioned my twitter at the top of the show it's at brent raptor all one word Um, I do not post good things there. It's mostly just art and garbage. Um, well, I do have a... Okay, art, (laughs) art is better, art is better on Twitter than most of the other stuff on Twitter, so... (laughs) That's true. Here's my editorialization. Uh, this person is crazy. Their stuff is great. Go check it out. (laughs) Thank you. Uh, and I do have an art blog at druzy.tumblr.com. That's dr. Double O S Y. Um, I don't update that as much as my Twitter, but my Twitter is literally just my first thought on everything. Um, <laughs> and I am working on Maskers, uh, which is by Toby G's Queer Studios. That's queer with an exclamation point. I am a storyboarder and a voice actor. I forgot to mention that. I will be playing a Megan with an H. Ah, uh-huh. um, one of the elusive H Megans. <laughs> Yeah, like an A Rachel, which I am not. I don't know why, but I I assume, I like imagined Megan spelled with a silent H at the beginning for some reason. <laughs> Megan. <laughs> yeah, just like indicating that you're wheezing it out. Megan. <laughs> um, <laughs> so yes. um, and you've uh, also got a Miriam Beach Tumblr. Yeah, I do. Miriam Beach, all one word, spelled like the woman's name. Um. That is, yeah, that's a Tumblr that's kind of showing off work in progress. I also have a Patreon, which I believe is also uh, Druzy. Let me check. Patre- I yeah, think, it's yeah. Druzy. Is it Druzy? I don't um, know. It just calls you Rachel K, so. Yeah, it does. Um, it's Druzy, D-R-O-O-S-Y. Uh, that's my Patreon, and you'll see, like, some updates about Miriam Beach coming along. It's going to be a comic that has a lot of the same ethos as a Bob's Burgers or Brooklyn Nine-Nine. It's basically, you know, one of those dumb, like, three gamers on a couch comic, but written by a non-gamer, and somebody who <laughs> thinks love is funny. So, yeah, I don't know, just watch out for awesome. that, I guess. Yeah, thanks. Uh, yeah, so no, I'm super excited for Miriam Beach. Like, I love what you've done uh, so far. I'm it's so precious. excited. I'm very excited, but I'm so afraid I'm going to let everyone down. But you're not. We'll see. It's it's so good. If 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 this helps you at all, just remember that failure is just another part of your story. Oh, I also like uh, the dinosaur comics take on it, which is failure is just success rounded down. (laughs) (laughs) Or like the or like the Swedes said in Brooklyn Nine Nine. Yeah. Uh, If you're wrong, that just means you've learned something. 
Oh, yes. I love that. <laughs> Unfortunately, learning something on the internet involves being yelled at, and I'm not excited about that part. <laughs> well, you've certainly got me on your side. I, I think that Why, the stuff you, you do is awesome, and I'm a big fan. Oh. Well, I'm a big fan of this show now that I've been on it. <laughs> so, Yay! It's egotistical so, as that so, so all we need to do is have everybody in the world on the That's show, correct. and then they'll be That's listeners. Correct. <laughs> That's correct. <laughs> okay, so yes, find uh, Rachel slash Brent uh, at yes. Brent Raptor on Twitter, uh, Druzy on Tumblr, check and Patreon, Patreon out, do it, I did, I'm I'm a patron. Oh, so, that's nice of you. Yeah, I had to. I, I, Why, I, love, I love Miriam Beach, and I want to know everything about it. <laughs> Me too. I'm, I'm finding out things as, as much as you are. Like, uh, well, that's on Twitter, so much fun, though. Yeah, on Twitter, most of my tweets are about, like, oh, God, what if Mason is a guy who calls bananas nanners and pineapples <laughs> napples? That's you, most of my tweets. And you know he it's is. It's literally just saying, my character <laughs> fucking does this. <laughs> like, well, it's, almost, that, it's that in 2D Russell shipping. Oh, yeah, it's mostly that. It's gorilla <laughs> shit now. I'm so sorry. But uh, it's like, since I draw my characters now, literally to graduate college, I have to have an escape. And so when I'm not drawing my boys, I'm drawing the other boys. Mm-hmm. The boys in the band. So, <laughs> yeah, that's my current... Again, my, my interests change, like, from week to week. I literally have ADHD. I'm not a person who says that to be fun. I actually have ADHD, and that means I can get really swept up in intense interests. So that's mostly what my Twitter is. It's a testament to that. <laughs> well, it's, it's it's a fun ride to be on. <laughs> it is. It is. <laughs> okay, Um. and then also uh, check out Alex's book coming out tomorrow. So by the time this episode goes up, it'll be out. You can buy it. Do What's it called? It's called The Myth of Man. Ooh. It's, it's um, a collection of queer poetry, and I'm really yeah. excited about it. That is exciting. Um, yes. And Falling I'll, Bridge I'll, Press? I'll, uh, Floating Bridge Floating Press. Bridge. Um, cool. And I'll, I'll provide a link. We'll provide links to purchasing yes. it online. I linked um, on or, the show notes last episode. I'll link the, yeah. the website again. Cool. Um, and if you want me to have money, purchase it from me. Um other if 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 it's easier just to order it from them go ahead as long as you get your hands on it i am happy <laughs> okay uh, i bet you say that to everybody <laughs> well i mean like you don't go into poetry expecting to be rich <laughs> <laughs> oh bu- buddy i am an artist i am with you 100 <laughs> percent yeah aspiring novelist here what okay oh boy <laughs> Oh, we're all just a bunch of losers. Now. Hopefully this great, podcast great. takes off so we can have some spending yeah, money. Well, that's, that's where the money on it, so that's strike one. <laughs> that's where the money is, podcasting. Right. Yeah, well, you could be gaming YouTubers. Let's all just be gaming YouTubers. <gasps> yeah, apparently that's where it's at. <gasps> just be really, really racist, but in secret. <laughs> Until it all comes crashing down around us. Yeah. That does it for today's episode. Thanks for listening. Please subscribe to us on YouTube if you absolutely love us, and like the video if you like us. You can also find us on iTunes, Google Play, and Anchor.fm. Please rate and subscribe so more nerds can find us. Check us out on Twitter at LitMeritPod for updates and news. And thanks to Jonathan Colton for the use of our theme song, Fraud, from his album Artificial Heart. Until next time, remember, no no guilty guilty pleasures. pleasures.